Rise for the gospel. shall we go you have the words of eternal life alleluia alleluia know the gospel according to mark the first chapter beginning with the 29th verse as soon as jesus and the disciples left the synagogue they entered the house of simon and andrew with james and john now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. They told him, her, told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. So last week, I did something a little bit different where I read both the Old Testament and the Gospel and preached on both of them. It's not something I do often, but this week I'm actually going to do it again. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the Old Testament in our sermon here as we, as we talk about Jesus' time here uh, with, in Simon's house and, and in the surrounding neighborhoods of Galilee. Because um, I think it's, it's a really interesting comparison. See, last week we had two different ways of, of kind of accepting God's call, right? And we can either run from it or uh, accept it completely. There was two different ways of kind of accepting, and actually it ended up being a third. So in, in many ways we talked about the many different ways to accept God's call. Well, this week, I want to talk about some of the different ways that we experience God in the world. And I think our Old Testament reading and the, and the gospel kind of set this up really, really interestingly. Because I, I would imagine if I were to poll most of you, or most people in, in, in this town, about what they think of when they think of God, they're going to fall somewhere closer to the lesson we have in the Old Testament, Right? Have you not known? Have you not been? Have you not heard? Have you not been told from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and his inhabitants like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes rulers of the earth as of nothing. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His power is unfathomable. That, I think for many of us, when we think about God, that is the picture in our head, is the God of the really, really big things. The, the, the creation of the world, the sun and the rain, the bringing rulers to power and and. and nations to their knees that is the god that we think of when we think of god something bigger than we can imagine and in many ways that is god god is the creator of the world god brings us the rain and the sun and he and he is behind the you know the rulers and the nations god is everywhere the big powerful creating god is very much a god that we know but in the gospel we get a slightly different picture of God as well. Because here is the God of the small things. We really think about it. Jesus shows up in this town. He goes to one of his disciples' homes, just a regular old home. And his mother-in-law is sick. And he heals her. This is such a, a very personal, tiny little thing. In, in, in the grand scheme of things, this is one person in one place and one time, and God goes and heals her. 
And then throughout the rest of the night, people come to him with their individual personal issues of, of health and, and brokenness. And one by one, God with them on an individual basis heals them. Very much the God of the small, everyday, day-to-day -day things that we deal with. It is incredible. So Christ comes in and he heals people. He takes them in their brokenness and, and their need and he heals them and he makes them better. The same God who created the world, bigger than anything we can imagine, is the same God who sits with them by their bedside and takes their hand so they can get up. It is an incredible thing because I think when we think of, of God just in the terms of, of the big deal, right, of, of all the big things, we start to wonder how we can really truly see that God, the God of all that power. And the truth is we see the God of that power in each and every individual life in the one-on-one -on -one relationships we each have with God, the God who walks among us. Because what does God heal people for? I mean, think about this story. Think about what happens. He goes into this woman's home, and, he, and she is laying in bed with a fever, and he holds her hand and lifts her up and heals her. And what does she do? She goes right back to serving. Now, for years, this, this verse has troubled I think people, because it has been used over and over again to try to uh, describe uh, certain gender roles and what people should be doing. And see, she's healed, so she's going to go serve people. But really, I don't think that's what it is. I think our interpretation of that says more about us than it does about what, gar what God and what Mark are trying to tell us here. Because she gets up, and that is her vocation. She starts serving. And as we see later in this very gospel, when, when the disciples are, are talking amongst themselves and they ask Jesus, who, which one of us will be uh, of most power when the kingdom comes? Who will sit at your right hand? And Christ says, if you want to serve me, you need to serve others. That is how we, we bring about the God of the big things into the lives of those around us. And so as you go out today, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember that the God who created the world, who is, is behind the birds singing and the sun shining and everything out there, is the same God who is at light in your own heart. And is the same God that is at light in the hearts of those around you and your neighbors. And if you want to see God, the most powerful God, if you want to experience that kind of God, look to your neighbors. Look to those who are serving one another, who are helping one another. Because that is the God that we know, both the God of the big things, the God of the little things. Amen. Our hymn of the day is, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, verses 1, 2, 5, and 6.